that that impacts much of the work that you all do. And so we're working really hard to um, hopefully keep you all with us and be able to provide work opportunities for you because we know that at the point where we get back to everybody, where we get back to school in our kind of the, the normal realm of school, that would be stage five, uh, that we, uh, we, we need everybody to be able to step back in and step up and do their, their regularly assigned duties. So, so just for the purpose of definition, um, as we talk today, we're gonna to talk about regular work and we're gonna talk about alternate work. And regular work is de defined as, you could define it just as the job that you were hired to do or jobs that are similar to that type of, uh, of, of work. For example, um, a food service associate may be serving, may typically serve meals in a cafeteria, but as we're, we've got our delivery service out to, to other schools and sites along bus routes, they may be serving that food through um, the, the bus, along the bus route. Likewise, we have bus drivers who- Yeah, 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 yeah. that'll be good. Yeah. I, I don't like being at, in the- We might have bus drivers who typically do home to school routes who are now doing meal service routes or EDEP workers who would be typically working with our after school program in supporting students there may be asked to be a part of our childcare program. So the, school, the work that they're doing is not exactly the same, but it is similar. Now, alternate work is a little bit different because one of the things that we know is without our students all being in school, the number of hours that we may have available for you to work um, may vary. And, and we're, we're, we're using this alternate work as a way to keep your hours whole. And, and when we say that, that means it's giving, providing work opportunities to allow you to work the full amount of time that you were intended to work. And it is also a way to make sure that you are able to be paid for that full amount of time. Um, when we went out of, when, when the schools closed down in the fall, we did not, we were not able to do this, but as we come back into the spring and we we're bringing people back into our buildings, uh, this, this is the way, this alternate work will allow you to be able to be paid your, your, normal, your normal salary and your normal rate. So alternate work is defined as, as work duties that are very different than what you would typically do. So for example, a, a non-building service employee may be um, maybe the alternate work available them maybe to help with building services, whether it's doing custodial work or maintenance or grounds activities. Um, we have a number of support staff who probably today got some messages uh, from their supervisors that we have opportunities for them to serve as learning coaches uh, for some of our students that are coming into buildings. We it might be support staff who's asked to conduct health street screenings or temperature checks or, or bus drivers who are asked to help serve meals as part of the work that they're doing. Um, but the, the, the bottom line here is it's giving you work that it will allow you to keep your hours whole. Um, and one of the things that we know, the, the, one of the questions that we're frequently asked is, well, what about our pay? Does that shift? And that is no. You, if, the, if the alternate work is at a lower pay grade than where you currently are, you will be still paid at your regular rate. Uh, but if the alternate work is at a higher rate, then we're going to evaluate those on a case-by-case -case basis, including how many hours you're working at that work and, and how frequent that work is. So, so the intent with this is to keep you all whole so that we can continue to, to, to pay you and so that you can continue to, to do the great work that you're doing with our, our school division. And um, again, to, to have you uh, with us when we're, as we move through this, as we progress through the stages back into what the, the normal typical work is. Um, I know that as we talk through these things that the definitions are really important. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jennifer Weller Kim, who is going to take you through some of the, the, language, that we'll, the language that we'll be talking about throughout the day. Thank you. Uh, so I just wanted to go over some of the definitions that we're going to talk about next when we go through um, the different options that are available to employees. Uh, Emily is also going to be talking about um, benefits a little later. So some of this will um, you'll hear again when, when she goes over the different um, benefit options for the different scenarios. Um, so a leave of absence is a voluntary um, request for an unpaid leave for a set period of time. So for many people, this might be something we're looking at for um, the first quarter, it might be for a semester, or it might even be for the full year. Um, you have to qualify for a leave of absence, which is um, to be 50% or more FTE and completed six months of continuous employment in a benefits eligible position. Um, you may um, be eligible for COBRA if you are on our insurance plans um, earlier. 
a resignation is a separation of employment. So you are no longer employed when you um, resign or retire. Um, so it's a voluntary termination and um, you are eligible for COBRA benefits uh, if you are currently on our plans. Uh, a furlough is a new term that you may be hearing and, and not quite sure what that means. Um, so it's an involuntary temporary layoff when there's no work available to you. Um, so you're still employed, but you're just in an inactive status, like the leave of absence, um, and you are eligible for COBRA um, if you are on our benefit plans. A leave without pay or leave without pay is, um, is a term for when an employee doesn't um, have enough time worked in a week. And um, so it's the impact of, of being short. Um, so you may have um, leave, and Emily will talk about that, but if you don't have enough accrued leave or of the appropriate type, um, then you're going to go into a leave without pay situation. And that this is meant to be used um, on a very short-term basis. So the leave of absence is the long-term, and the leave without pay is, is short-term. Uh, another option is for a voluntary reduction in hours. Um, this is something that is made at an employee's request um, if they don't um, want to continue working, um, you know, what's available to them. Um, the supervisor has to agree to this, so it has to be something that, that we can accommodate. And um, there's also no guarantee that your hours will increase at a later, later point. Um, so I think that that's something that's really important to know. And then lastly, we have COVID admin leave. Um, this may be a leave that you saw on your time cards, um, you know, back in the spring and that we did use it to keep employees whole. Um, now we're really trying to find work for everyone um, so that COVID, COVID admin leave should really be used sparingly um, to, um, to fill in an employee's time card and keep them whole. Um, but really, we need to first exhaust all regular work and the alternative work options. Um, so next, Claire's going to go through the um, the flow chart of options we have. Thanks, Jennifer. So as, as Jennifer was talking, it hit me, you know, all of those things are talking about what happens if you all leave us. Our hope is that that is not the case, but again, we wanted to, to make sure that you were aware of the, the terminology of, and the, the options that, that do exist for you. But the, the flow chart that's in front of you now is really kind of our way of determining um, how we can make sure that we are able to provide work for, for our employees. So, so I'm going to walk you through this and Dave is going to kind of follow us along with that, that red dot uh, that, that you can see. So as we're thinking this through, the, the first thing is, is your regular work available? So um, I'm going to go down the, the left hand side first where we get to the yes. So the, the first question, so if your regular work is available, we'd like you to be able to do that, obviously. But the but we also know that for some people that um, you may have uh, risk factors um, as identified by the, the CDC that may um, where you may find that you really need to be able to work remotely. You, you may not be able to be uh, interacting with people or in different situations. And so the, the question that we would ask if your regular work is available is, can your duties before, be performed remotely? Unfortunately, not all jobs can. So let's first take the, a look at the ones that can be done remotely. So what you would wanna do is you would wanna discuss the possibilities of telework with your supervisor uh, to determine if the criteria is met. Now that, that criteria includes do, is there enough work for you to be able to do your telework and still work the full number of hours that you have? So if the answer to that is yes, then you work as, as directed and, and you move on. So let's say though that you talk to your supervisor and they say, yes, you can telework, but we can't either, we can't, or yes, you can telework and we cannot work your full hours. You can't, we don't have the full number of hours for you that can be done through telework or that you're in a position where your work really cannot be done remotely. So, so then it becomes the, are there enough hours for your regular work? Um, if the answer to that is yes, you'll see a pattern here. When we typically see yes, it's then you do your work as directed. Um, and the, if the answer to that is no, that's when we get to this available work list. And what, what we've done with, with, I'm sorry, with alternate work, what we've done with the alternate work list is we've asked all of our our department directors and all of our principals to identify roles that could be done in their schools and departments that may not be the typical work that we do, but because of our uh, virtual or primarily virtual schooling that we're going to be in, 
the work is available to them. So you'd be provided with some options for available work uh, to make up the hours. It may be a, a, a small number of hours or a larger number of hours, depending on your position and the need. So if that work is available, obviously the first choice that you have is to do that work. Um, and that, that's the way to keep your hours whole. And that's what we're really encouraging you to do. But we also know that everybody has unique situations. And so if you are, are not able to do the alternate work, that's when you would go into the series of decisions that you have to make about whether or not you want to use your, your paid leave to make up hours um, for as long as that lasts, or you could take a leave, with, a, leave, a leave without pay, as Jennifer just talked about, or you could also uh, voluntarily reduce those hours. So if you were typically a, 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 an eight hour employee and there was only enough work for you to work six hours and you said, you know what, I'm good with those six hours, so I'm gonna voluntarily reduce, you would have that op opportunity there. Um, on the other side of that is the, of the, is the alternate work available is no. Now, I've seen the alternate work list, so I really don't think we're gonna have to go here for in a, in, inability to have alternate work for people, but this is where we would use the COVID admin leave because this is, a, this is us saying, as a school division, nowhere across the division do we have work that we can provide you to, get, to keep your hours whole, in which case that would not count against you with your, uh, with your work and we would, we, we would use COVID admin leave to make up your remaining hours so you would still be paid for your, your full work duties. Again, that is going to be used very sparingly, very different than what we did in the springtime uh, where that was the norm. This is not gonna be the norm here. And again, I'm not anticipating very much if any use of that as we move through um, stage two at least. Um, going back up to the, is your regular work available? So let's say that your regular work is not available. There's nothing, nothing about your job that can be done in stage two, three or four. Um, and so, is, so then we ask ourselves, is alternate work available? So obviously the first, the first place that we'll look to is yes. So yes, alternate work is available. And so th then you have a choice. You can choose to do that alternate work, um, or you could say, you know what, I, I, I'm really not gonna, you know, that's not something that I'm interested in right now. So I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna either take a leave of absence or I'm going to resign or, or, take a, or be furloughed. Um, if that work, if that alternate work is available and you say, yes, I'm very willing to do that alternate work, but there is not enough hours to keep you to your regularly assigned uh, hours, then you would do whatever that alternate work is. And then that's when we would also use that COVID admin leave to, to make up the hours. So you would still stay whole within the, the, um, the hours worked and the, your regular pay. And then again, the same options exist. If you choose not to do that is you could take a leave of absence or resign or be furloughed. So this is a lot of information. Uh, we, we, we recognize that every single person in the room and in, across the school division is in very different places and has very unique needs. And, but we, we thought this was a good thing to put up in front of you to just show you some of the decision-making process and the, and the opportunities that you have existing along the way. Again, I feel that we have plenty of alternate work um, we, we know that we are still trying to, to match some pieces together for some people, and that's something that our, our principals and our department heads are, are working on um, even as we speak. So um, hopefully this provided some insight to you and you can kind of think about where you are along the way in the, in the, in the work. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Emily to talk a little bit about benefits. Thank you. Um, so in um, phone calls with some of you and in reviewing the questions that you had sent in prior to this meeting, um, we noticed that there were a lot of questions regarding medical and dental benefits. So I wanted to take some time to review what would happen to your medical and dental benefits based on the various options you have in front of you. Um, so first would be if you're going to be doing alternative work um, or if you're going to be um, filling in your missed time if you're not working your full work week um, with annual leave, personal leave, comp time, COVID admin leave, or um, leave without pay. In all of these circumstances, your monthly medical and dental premium rate will remain the same. It will not change. 
Um, the only caveat to that is if you are going to be taking an entire month of leave without pay, you will not be eligible for medical or dental benefits. You have to have paid leave or work within the month in order to receive those benefits. Um, then after that, um, if you decide to take a voluntary reduction in the amount of hours that you work, um, there are a few different things that could happen. So if you take a reduction and you end up anywhere from 70 to 99% part-time, um, you will continue to receive your medical and dental rates at the full-time employee rate. If you end up between 50 and 69% part-time, you will still be eligible for medical and dental coverage, but you will pay the medical and dental premium at a higher rate, um, and that is based on the number of hours that you work. We do have a calculator for this out on our website that allows you to put in the number of hours you work or the percentage of part-time that you're going to be working, um, and then whichever plan you're enrolled in. Um, to kind of get an idea of what that will cost each month. Um, and then finally, if you fall below 50% part-time, you will no longer be eligible for benefits. At that time, your active employee benefits would cease and you would be offered COBRA coverage for a maximum of 18 months. Um, I did want to remind you that a change in hours is considered a qualifying life event that allows you to make certain changes to your medical and dental coverage. Um, these changes would include dropping a dependent, adding a dependent, enrolling in coverage, or terminating coverage. Uh, a qualifying event would not allow you to switch from one plan to the other, meaning you couldn't switch from the choice medical plan to the select medical plan, or vice versa. And then the options of if you won't be performing any work. Now, I did want to emphasize that this is not the option that we want you to go with. We need you here at ACPS. We want you to come back to work, but I did want to let you know what your options were for medical and dental in the event that you did have to go down this route. Um, so if you need to take a leave of absence or you are going to be furloughed, um, your active employee benefits will cease and you will be offered COBRA coverage for the time that you will be out on leave or be furloughed. When you return back from the leave or the furlough, your active employee benefits will start back up again. And then finally, if you end up resigning, um, you would be offered COBRA coverage for a maximum of 18 months. Now, just a quick reminder of what COBRA coverage is. It is a continuation of the benefits you held as an active employee. Um, so you can't really make many changes when you switch over to COBRA coverage and you can't enroll at that time. Um, it's really just a continuation of whatever you had while you were employed. Um, and it is the full cost plus 2% administrative fee. Um, that means that you would be paying the premium rate you currently pay, plus the board contribution you receive each month, plus a 2% administrative fee. The rates for this are out on our benefits website. Thank you. Lorna, I think you're still muted. Thank you. So we're at the last slide. As we said, it would take about 30 minutes. What we wanna have you uh, draw your attention to here is some resources. Uh, both uh, the division has a new website and human resources with the employee resources site are new websites. Uh, the information, we spent some time to make sure that we have helpful information out there for you and that it's in the easy to read format and it's easy to understand. So I know that might seem like it's overwhelming, but I think it's organized pretty well. So the first place to go is that return to school website. There's a ton of resources out there, um, employee resources, good information there as well. And I also wanted to remind you about the required safety training. This is, uh, all employees have to take this and we have to complete it by September 8th. It's actually pretty fun training. Uh, you might think COVID safety training uh, would be dry and boring, but I think uh, the team has done a good job of making it about as um, entertaining as possible. It takes about 20 minutes, so allow for that. Uh, and then health and safety practices, another site with some good information. And I wanted to remind you all about our employee assistance program. Guidance Resources is our EAP. Uh, they provide uh, wonderful services and you might be aware that you can get free counseling for yourself and your family. Right now it's up to five 
sessions uh, per year. We're looking to expand that for the time being. They also provide other resources, financial, budgeting, legal, and can help you identify child care or elder care resources as well. So we wanted to uh, make sure that you were aware of that. Also wanted to let you know that we are planning to do vaccination clinics this year. That'll be coming in October. Uh, it's going to look a lot different this year. We're still planning, but, but keep, keep an eye out on the compass and um, you'll see those at, at some point soon. And then the last thought I wanted to just uh, remind you all about is that um, these are very challenging times we're in um, and have been for a while. And many of you chose to work with us because you wanted to make a difference in a student's life. And you're not gonna be able to make that difference if you don't take care of yourself. So my reminder to you today is please take care of yourself. Uh, do what you need to stay healthy. Kind of like that old story where uh, when you're on an airplane and the, the stewardess is uh, going over the safety uh, protocol and they pull out the oxygen mask. And if you're with a child, you know, your instinct would be to put it on the child first. But no, you've got to put that mask on yourself first so that you can take care of that child. So just try to remember that as we go through these challenging times. And uh, again, thank you for all you do. Next, I'm going to turn it over to Daphne and we'll open it up for the questions. Uh, thank you so much, Lorna, Claire, and the HR team for the helpful and informative presentation. Um, at this time, we will have questions from our audience members and HR team members, please feel free to respond to questions. Uh, a couple of reminders for our audience members. Um, we have Ms. Eileen Gomez with us uh, to answer any health and safety questions. And then if you would like to ask a question, um, again, you can ask it in the chat or you can please go down to the Zoom menu and click on the participants list. Um, and please remember to keep your questions and comments as brief as possible. So with that, do you have any questions? While people are thinking about questions, I'll, I'll just jump in. One of the earlier questions um, asked if this session was being recorded so that you could share it with your, with your colleagues. We did not record this, but we are going to, well, now it says recording, maybe we did record this, at least partially. <laughs> um, but we are going to put the slide deck on the Return to School website uh, in the employee resources so that you will be able to access it there. All right. Do we have any questions? I know we have some questions up. <laughs> ah, we have a hand. Yes, Miss Jenny, please ask. Hi. How are you? How, how are you? Um, question. So I you know, I answered the phone at the front desk here at the county building. And some of the phone calls that I've been getting are from parents. They want to know how we determine the stages or phases and where can they find that on the website? That's a great question. Um, there is, so that's one of the pieces of information that we put out in our uh, to our school board. We actually had a, a conversation about this with the Albemarle Educators Association and leadership group yesterday. We are trying to get the specific guidelines uh, that are that are uh, that we're using out in public so that, that they're easier to find. So that you can find them now embedded in school board um, meeting uh, uh, slide decks, but we're, we'll, we'll get that a little bit more up front. But some of the things that we're looking at, and Eileen, please feel free to jump in and help me out here. So some of the things that we're looking at is uh, what are some of the, the guidance from the, um, from the agencies that we are paying attention to, like the Thomas Jefferson Health District and the CDC, Virginia Department of Health. We are also looking at um, what, the, what the community COVID numbers look like, um, currently looking at trends. 
we are looking, and, and I'm gonna let Eileen talk a little bit more about that in a second, because that's, that's really kind of interesting, giving our heads up there. And then uh, we, we also are looking at testing ability and the timing for a test to be, for us to hear about testing results. Uh, we, and then we all are also looking at um, our staffing availability. So do we have the staff that's available to physically work in the schools with students? And then, um, and then also just some community survey information that's out there. I feel like I'm missing one more of them, but that's kind of the gist of it. Um, there, there's unfortunately not just a single number or a single metric that we're looking at. So um, Eileen, what would you add and what can you share with them about, about what I just said? I was just going to say that uh, the measures of community transmission that they take into consideration are the, um, the number of cases in the population, as well as the testing percent positivity rate and the testing percent positivity rate of all those who get tested, what percent test positive. That's predictive of the number of cases you're going to get in a couple of weeks. So those are the two measures that they take into consideration. Uh, and as Claire said, the, um, the trend of those two. We, there was those, those measures were actually pretty high in July. And then um, the, the data showed that there was a decrease in number of cases over the course of August. But then just recently, we're seeing a, um, an increase again, a slight increase. So we're just gonna watch that and um, report that to the um, school board every, every meeting. One, one of the things, just so, you, that it's, so that everybody's aware timeline-wise, what the school board just, so that, that we have five stages, I, I think I mentioned that, and it, stage one is nobody's in school. That's kind of where we were in the spring. Um, stage two is where we have a limited number of students coming in the building, and uh, it's a very limited number, like probably about uh, seven to 900 students across the whole school division is who's been invited in. It includes our students who, uh, who are not able to access the internet for learning at home. Obviously, we, we need them to be able to access that when we're in a virtual world. Um, that we also have invited some of our special needs students and uh, some of our English la language learners who, again, are unable to access the instruction uh, because of their needs. And so that small group of students who, is, who has been invited in in stage two. Moving to stage three, it includes um, all of our kindergarten through third grade students, as well as all of our special education and all of our English language learners. And stage four is more of a hybrid where we kind of have everybody back in uh, with very modified schedules throughout the week. And then stage five is kind of business as we, as we, as we know it as school or business as we used to know it as school, I should say. Um, the, the decision to move forward, um, the school board decided that they were going to look at the, the, a stage for an entire quarter so of a school year. So the nine weeks of a school year, once a decision is made, we would stay in that stage for at least that amount of time before we would move forward. So, so as we begin school on, the, on September 8th, next Tuesday, um, we're starting in stage two and we will be in that stage all the way for the first quarter, which I think ends the, either the very end of October or the very beginning of November. I don't have the calendar right in front of me. But what's going to happen is at the midway point through the through the quarter, the school board, you know, like Eileen said, we're sharing this information with them, uh, the the metrics and all of that every school board meeting. But at the at the midpoint meeting, so that will be the first school board meeting in October. Um, they are going to listen. To, uh, we'll have a recommendation from Dr. Haas that the board will act on as to, as to what we do next. So it, is it that we stay in stage two moving forward or do we move on to stage three? So, and, and um, I, don't, I don't think there's any intention to jump stages um, and it's gotta be the board's decision to move forward based on the recommendation. That said, let's th say that things got really crazy and went really south and when you know, everything went in the other direction the superintendent can make the decision to move backwards in a stage without board approval. So you know, the, 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 the thing that I hope you, you take away from all of this information is that we're not gonna move forward if, if we don't think it's safe for the community to move forward. All right, thank you, Claire. We have a hand, um, Dee Strickler. Yes, my question is sort of if we were to slip back and went back to phase one, I'm sure that's a lot more furloughs. I just wanted to know about furlough and unemployment, whether that was available with if we get furloughed. So I 
think, uh, let me see if I can clarify the question. Dana, you're talking about that if the work did not exist and we, and if we as a school division said there is no work for you, what is the, what's the availability for unemployment if, if we did need to go to a furlough? Is that accurate? Yes. I, my, I'm, when you just finished saying if we went backwards to phase one, that's where I'm thinking in my mind, I'm gonna see a lot of furloughs. Yeah. So and, and that's, I yeah, and, and yeah. Or with unemployment, with that to have some money coming in. Sure, so, so the, the thing that I will say is regardless of the stage that we are in, we are committed to try, in, in the springtime, we didn't have the alternate work availability. You know, we would be hopeful that even in, a, in even if we were to have to go backwards, that we would have at least some alternate work available. So, so hopefully we would be able to take care of many of our people. That said, um, and uh, I'm looking to the HR people for this, but I'm going to try to uh, the uh, the real HR people, not me. I'm going to try to answer this. But one one of the things that I know about um, unemployment is that you can apply for unemployment, I believe, if there's a furlough. But but it's up to the um, the Virginia Employment Commission to determine whether or not you would get that. Uh, is that is that accurate, yeah. HR team? Yeah. Does that help, Dana? Great, thank you. Great. All right, we have a question in the chat. Um, if we have a staff member who is working a portion of their hours, we have given additional work and they are still short, do we need to have HR approve the use of COVID admin? I'm pausing so it's not just a me show, but but I can go on. So, uh, so in a in a case like this, you would be working with your supervisor, and it's your supervisor who would do the approval for the COVID admin. I think one thing to add there, Claire, also would be um, if they're still short with the additional work that's that second or that first round of additional work maybe there would be an opportunity to look for other additional work that would pair up better with their portion, their regular portion of hours or their regular work. So it would make them more whole and they wouldn't be coming up short. Just an idea. I will say one of the questions that we had in the, in the earlier session in the day is, especially for some of our TAs, there seems to be some um, uncertainty at this time about what your actually going to be doing and what your actual hours are and, and all that type of thing. And, um, you know, that's one of those things that my understanding is that we should be able to have work uh, regular hours for all of our TAs. It's just how that, what it might look like within the structure of a school day. And so, um, as I described before, right now, our, our principals have probably about 150 things on their to-do list. Um, it might feel like 150,000 right now um, before Tuesday morning, and they are all urgent and they are all important. And if they haven't talked to you about what the needs are and what the hours are and what it is that you're going to be doing, please don't hesitate reaching out to them and just say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to plan for next week. What time do you need me there? Or, you know, that type of thing. So they will get to you. We also recognize that over the first, first uh, the course of the first um, couple of days of school, just like in any year, there's a lot of um, things that um, that happen, and you know, we we have more students who register, we have students who are registered who who withdraw, and so just remember that at, at least in the within the next week or so, to be really okay with a lot of flexibility, and then things should settle down after that. Thanks, Claire. We have any other questions? Yes, I do. Wonderful. Yeah. I think, so, I think Elaine's got a question. Yeah. yeah. So one of the alternative duties that you talked about were learning coaches. So would people be trained, be, uh, I guess, tomorrow before to be able to start on Tuesday, if they're going into the building on Tuesday? That's a great question. I think it's good. I, I think that uh, that if there was the availability for a person to go in and and learn a little bit more about what to do, I think that would be very powerful. And uh, but we also recognize that not every schedule allows for that. We actually have a, a, a kind of a, a handbook for our learning coaches that provides information around. It includes the health and safety guidelines. It includes the um, it includes the um, 
like the some of the the ways to help with the students with technology and and, and some of those types of things. So um, I think that that will probably be there'll be some time spent with that on Tuesday, and that will be made available to you. The thing that I will say for any of you that are that are in doing alternate work, whether it's a learning coach or something else, please don't hesitate asking questions um, in the in in your schools and departments to to make sure that you have a thorough understanding of what the expectations are. And I know that that everybody wants to do a really good job and we wanna make sure that you feel comfortable and confident with it. Um, I, do, I do think next week might feel a little messy, um, especially as everybody's kind of learning some, as many people are kind of learning some new things. But I think that, you know, I think that, um, that it will all start making sense and you'll see that it, it's, the, the work is really pretty logical as we move forward. I just have to say with the learning coaches, um, we'll have students in the building, yeah. Yeah. limited language students who don't understand a lot of English. So, you know, that's not, it's not really going to be a time for training. Sure. So I hope there is some capacity for training people tomorrow if they're going so, into the building on Tuesday morning. And that, so that's going to be at a site by site basis. So I would reach out to the, the principal or assistant principal at the school where you're doing that to see if that's possible. Great question. Thank you for that. Do we have any other questions? I have, I have a, a, just a comment. And that's, I think, from um, being sitting in on some of the meetings where we're trying to coordinate the alternate work with the various locations and, and employees. Um, just encourage you, if you have questions about alternate work um, for yourself or a friend or whoever, please work with your supervisor because they're really working with the coordinators who are look, putting all, have the kind of the big picture for the school division together. I know that it's tempting. You have relationships with people in the schools and you want to reach out directly to your, you know, principal who's also a friend and you've been working with for years, but to, to kind of keep it all, um, try to keep the process orderly as, as we can. It's helpful to just have the supervisor be in touch with, the, um, the kind of the alternate work coordinators. So we have it all captured and, and we know who needs what and what locations and how many and all of that stuff. So just if you hear people asking, you know, um, about alternate work, please direct them. Or if you have questions, ask the, those questions to your um, supervisor. All right, I'm looking for, ah, I have a couple of additional questions in the chat. Um, how will clocking in work? Do we clock in and out throughout the day while on Zoom with students and working with students individually? Do you want me to take that one? Sure. No. So um, anytime you are working, um, you should clock in. We're going to continue to use Kronos. Um, if you aren't able to access um, Kronos, please talk with your supervisor. Um, we, we have a mobile app. You can also sign in um, through your computer. Um, so depending on the amount of time in between, um, we'll kind of dictate to whether you need to clock um, out for, for that break time. Um, for breaks that are shorter than 20 minutes, um, those would be, you would still be on the clock for, for longer than that, um, you would clock out. So I think uh, the best thing to do would be to talk with your supervisor about the schedule um, and then follow those procedures just like we did when we were, um, you know, live in school. Thank you, Jennifer. As we're waiting for a few, a few other questions to, to show up in here, um, I just want to just express my gratitude to every single one of you. Um, you know, you, you, you've heard Dr. Dr. Haas and Lorna and others say talk about us not being able to do the work without you. And that, that, that's an understatement. We need every single one of you. We need every single one of you in, the, in your regular roles and also in the alternate work that, that doing the alternate work that may exist for you. Um, we, we, we would love to keep you through the, 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 the stages two, three, and four, but we, you know, definitely want you around as we, as we get back to full time as well. But um, again, thank you so much for everything you do every single day for our kids. And, um, 
uh, again, you all you all are the kind of the backbone of the organization. We we couldn't do the we couldn't do the great work with the the kids face to face with them uh, that our teachers are doing without the support that you all are doing. So I just want to thank you for that, and and also say that I hope that each one of you and your families um, are safe and healthy. And and going back to what Lauren said about taking care of yourself, that you're doing that as well. So. I'm going to be quiet now. I have a hard time with that. You've probably figured that out already. So um, I'll turn it back to Daphne. So I, can, can I have uh, a number? I have a personal question to ask you. Um, is that okay if I give you a call? Sure. We'd love to hear from you. Okay. Which number can I reach you? Um, so can you tell us generally, is it a benefit question or? Um, I am a TA, but I'm working on my licensure right now. And my, I had a meeting with my principal today and she was, uh, she's kind of give, giving me um, a little bit more work as a, a teacher. So I was just wondering if that could mean like a little extra money or something. Okay, so maybe, um, Michael, maybe connecting with um, the licensure specialist first to see if maybe we can get you um, a provisional license based on, you know, what you've done already as far as your coursework. Um, so I know Michael would love to talk with you further about this. Okay, uh, and so Michael, could you... Uh, yeah, yeah, Christian, you can reach reach out to me too if you if we want to talk and we can kind of find out more about what's going on. Okay, thank you. Okay. I have another question. Licenses before, so we can um you can reach out to me also. Thank you. I have another question in the chat. Um, is there a timeline that we will be notified by our supervisor regarding what our job duties will be, um, especially at uh, teaching assistants specifically? If, if you're not aware of that at this point, I would go ahead and reach out to your principal and ask them that question. Any other questions? All right, uh, Lorna, would you like to say a few words before we um, end this session? I would just like to echo the, the thanks that, that you've heard uh, for all you do. Uh, and I'd also just like you to know that HR is here to support you as we go through this unusual year. Uh, so we, I, I hope you know how to find us and thank you for, for attending today. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, again, we appreciate all of your hard work and support for our, our students, staff and community. Um, we wish you a great uh, beginning of the school year, and uh, we look forward to hearing all the great things that you're going to be doing this year um, in your school communities. Um, we hope you have a good afternoon. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us.
everybody else. Looks like it. So just so you guys know, I had a private chat with Emily Sisleski. I don't know how you really say her name. Just to, I said where I, I didn't I, I didn't know where she was, so I just I asked her. I said where you know where are you going to be a learning coach because we'll make sure that the administrators connect with you. No, she, was said, she asked for someone said, else.